Hey guys, this is just for you. Uh, yes, I'm looking kind of skinny because I had the flu. I'm still getting over it. I lost about 15 pounds, kind of sucked. Um, right before getting into the car, I was reading a post from a guy who is a hypochondriac, has panic and anxiety, low T symptoms, very, very, very hesitant about getting on testosterone. Uh, said he's seen some studies, you know, the studies are worrying him. Um, now to this particular individual, this is not an attack on you whatsoever. You're not the first person to come in with some of these uh, concerns and fears. Um, none of them have any basis in reality uh, at all. Uh, if they did, none of us would be doing this. We do this uh, to protect ourselves from many of these issues. Uh, we are clearly researching this actively. I've been researching this actively for probably eight years. Um, if I had seen any concern or any reason why I should not be doing this, there is no reason I would be doing this. Okay, I'd be doing something else, as would most other people. We are doing this to protect ourselves from future issues. Okay? If you look at teenagers who have higher levels of testosterone, they do not have strokes, they do not have heart attacks, they don't have cardiovascular disease, unless they're severely obese and in poor health. They don't have any of these issues, okay? And that is primarily the testosterone and the resulting estradiol that they have that protects them from this. As men age, these levels drop and that's when all the issues begin to happen. We raise these levels to optimal levels to protect ourselves from these things, okay? The guy made a comment saying, well, teenagers, you know, their levels fluctuate. And when you're on TRT, your levels are stable. Therefore, it's not the same, so it must be more dangerous. Can you explain to me why it would be that you have a teenager with natural levels that fluctuate a little bit, completely normal, or you have a guy on TRT whose levels are optimal but are stable? Why would the stable levels somehow be more dangerous than fluctuating levels? How would that make a difference? It doesn't make a difference. It absolutely doesn't make a difference. They both have higher levels of testosterone. One is fluctuating a little bit, one is stable. You want your levels to fluctuate, inject yourself every two weeks, your levels will fluctuate. We know that doesn't work, we know that's silly, okay? It is a non-concern. People living at altitude have higher levels of hematocrit and hemoglobin all the time by default. They are not dropping dead of heart attacks and strokes, they're not all lined up at the blood banks having to donate blood due to, due to their thicker blood. Okay, I just posted a study in the very, very thread demonstrating that this is called erythrocytosis. It is completely normal to be expected on TRT. It is a non-issue. It is absolutely a non-issue. If you're measuring your hematocrit and hemoglobin when you do labs, make sure you're completely fully hydrated. If you are dehydrated, those values will go up. Okay? Um, many of the studies that you will see are flawed. They are severely flawed. There are studies right now claiming anything above 1,000 IU of vitamin D a day is toxic. Uh, Health Canada banned the sale of vitamin D, anything higher than 1,000 IU, due to these studies. The studies are absolutely absurd. If you take 1,000 IU a day of vitamin D every single day, you will be deficient in vitamin D. Absolutely will be deficient. The RDA right now, I believe, is 800 uh, IU, not even 1,000, 800. They're claiming anything above that is toxic, okay? Vitamin C, they claim anything over a gram of vitamin C a day is toxic. If you look at the studies for testosterone, most of them are absolutely flawed to death, and it is so easy to figure out if you know how to read studies. You need to look at interventional studies. You need to find studies where there's a group of men, they raise their levels of testosterone. Do they have a heart attack? Do they have a stroke? Do they have cardiovascular events? No, they don't. Okay, if you say, well, these groups of people here, you know, they had higher levels of testosterone and they, they were more prone to heart attack, that is just a study of association. They could have said the heart attack was caused because they had socks or they wore shoes or because they wore underwear. Okay, that doesn't demonstrate anything. You need to do an interventional study. We're going to take a group of men, they are, have low testosterone, we're going to raise these levels of testosterone, and we're going to see what the outcome is. Okay. Those studies do not demonstrate any harm, they only have benefits. In every single study where they raise testosterone in a man and raise estradiol in a man, there are benefits. That is why we are taking it. A lot of you guys are having fears of stuff with no basis in reality whatsoever. Now, if you'd like to prove me wrong, you can find me a study where they raise testosterone in a man and it caused heart attacks. 
What we have seen, however, is a bunch of studies where they use people in poor health, people that were obese, people that were couch potatoes eating shit from McDonald's and drinking Coke and smoking a couple packs a day, lying on their asses, doing nothing for years and years and years and years. They get on testosterone. Guess what happens? Ooh, I feel fantastic. I got all this energy. Let me get up and I'm going to start exercising. They go to the gym. They start trying to bench 200 pounds and drop that of a heart attack. Why? Their bodies were not prepared for that sudden increase of activity. They were in poor health. Okay? They could have dropped dead of a heart attack having some crazy sex with their wife or girlfriend. It wouldn't have changed a thing. It was not the testosterone that caused the heart attack. It was the significant increase in activity and energy that was provided to them by raising their testosterone. Okay? So you got to use your heads here and use logic. There are so many of you that come into this group looking for, well, you know, this is dangerous and that's dangerous. And hey, if you think everything is dangerous, keep your low testosterone. Don't raise your levels. And in time, when the issues start to kick in, you're going to say, shit. Okay? That's it.